All right, welcome out to Tax Talk. Remember, if you have a question, excuse me, send them to me, taxtalkquestions.com. We'll answer them right here on the show. It's a landing page. Again, it's taxtalkquestions.com. We have a great question today. We've been talking about, should you convert a traditional IRA to Roth? Robin mentioned that at the top of the show today, I believe. Let's break this down because today's question comes in from Christopher. Christopher's question is, uh, would rolling money out of my traditional IRA into my Roth IRA be a smart move before I retire? He also goes on to say he's 50 right now, planning to go at 60. I'm assuming go is retire at 60. Um, would there be any benefit? I have two pensions through work plus social security. Um, Jerry Massasak, the man with the tax plan, CPA here at the firm. Jerry, what are your thoughts? Well, Bill, as, as I say quite often, it depends. But it depends means there's opportunity for a plan to see, does it make sense? With Roth conversion specifically, a lot of people are worried about the tax impact, the tax hit. Um, if you're still working, this is going to cost me there are opportunities and strategies that we can layer on top of this Roth conversion that will allow us maybe to mitigate that tax hit a little bit. So it's not off the table for anybody. It really should apply to anybody out there. Now, there's, th this is a big one I get, and I've had this conversation many times um, in my 27 years. And that's simply like a lot of people think there's income limitations and they, they just aren't eligible for a conversion. Correct, Bill. So a lot of people get confused with Roth contributions versus Roth conversions. With, with the contribution, there are some limitations. Roth conversions, those don't exist right now. And you could do multiple Roth conversions during a year. You cannot go backwards though. So once you do it, it's done. It can't be undone. So that's the importance of having a plan and, and sticking to that plan. Well, and Christopher is in a situation too, where he's 50, he has a 10 year time horizon, you know, like with a, a good tax plan and some strategy to maybe minimize some of those, those taxes, the accumulation of dollars when he gets to that age 60, he could be in a position where he could be turning on tax-free income and who wouldn't want that? You know, we've been talking about that on the show today. How do you develop more tax-free income from a strategy? And Jerry, I think this is a big thing that you guys look at here at the firm in terms of a tax team and how we develop a plan. Absolutely. So when we're looking at a plan, Bill, we're, we're looking at, you know, tax rates now, tax rates coming forward, because this is clearly a very proactive uh, strategy. And we're looking at, are we doing a systematic Roth conversion over a series of years? Are we banging it all at one time and, and, and getting it in a big lump sum? Um, you know, depending on the situation and the plan, there, there are opportunities. We got a question in from Steve in Cuyahoga Falls. You know, we talked about opportunity zones before with rental properties and stuff like that. Steve's question is pretty simple. It's is what is an opportunity zone and how can that how can that benefit me? How does it work essentially is what he's asking. So Jerry Massasak. So opportunity zones, let's start with, hey, wh what's an opportunity zone? Um, and it's a newer concept. Um, the Tax uh, Cut and Jobs Act of 2017 passed in, at the end of 2017, basically introduced this. In essence, the IRS uh, designated some economically distressed regions that they said, hey, if you invest in these, we'll allow you to maybe have a little bit of a tax incentive. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So tax incentive, let's break that down and let's talk about what could qualify there. Absolutely. So, and we're talking about capital gains specific and it's capital gains on rental property. It's capital gains on stocks, on mutual funds, the sale of a business, you know, anything under the sun that's a capital gain. This is a strategy that could allow you to defer 
the payment of that capital gain tax. Well, that's uh, that sounds awesome. And I know that when we sit down and help people build a comprehensive plan, this is one of the areas we look at. This is so important why you need to be proactive when building a comprehensive plan. Like I think most people look at tax planning and they go in and they say, oh, well, I'm going to get my taxes done and that's your tax plan. Or, hey, it's time to have my CPA do my taxes. Well, actually, I want you to be thinking a little differently. I want you to say, okay, between January, February, March, and April, I want you to be thinking about not the prior year. I want you to be thinking about the current year. What can we be doing now to plan ahead? And this is where when we have time, time is on our side, time gives us choices. And so when you think about, uh, Jerry, what you said a minute ago, a pretty newer um, came out in 2017. I think there's some misconceptions though with some people in terms of they think of an opportunity zone as only low income housing. And I know there's some other pretty cool stuff where you talk about these economically designated areas. And here's yeah. a big one. And I'll let you kind of elaborate because I know we've put some plans together on this. The Permian Basin in Texas, there are opportunity zones. So now we're talking about something that could not only give you a tax break, but could potentially now, let me back up. This is for accredited investors. You have to be an accredited investor, Jerry. Correct. Yep. So not necessarily for everybody, but it does, like you alluded to, Bill, it opens up the opportunity for investments in the energy sector with oil and gas, which have their own tax benefits uh, attributed to them. So it, it's it's been opened up and expanded over the last couple of years. We have a question. Great one this week, as Robin talked about earlier. Uh, if you have a capital gain, can you avoid it? So this week's question comes from Roger in Milan, Ohio. Roger, thanks for submitting this question. Uh, Roger uh, purchased a, a rental property for approximately $45,000, Jerry, and he sold it for $125,000. He has capital gains. Um, how can he or what can he do here uh, to minimize or avoid that? Absolutely, Bill. So thank you. Um, number one, make sure you're taking advantage of all your carry forwards. Look at that. I've seen it a million times. People miss that stuff. So that's number one. So specific to Roger, what can Roger do? Th there are several strategies, um, one of which is called loss harvesting, um, which if you don't know what that is, it is really selling capital loss property or capital gain property at a loss. So you're realizing a loss and you're offsetting that loss against other capital gains. So in essence, you can sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and those losses that you harvest can be used to offset your rental property gain, um, if that applies. And it has non-retirement assets, okay? Non-qualified uh, investments. Jerry, now I know you, you, you're probably gonna talk about this, but there's different capital gains brackets. Um, maybe go into that a little bit as, before you go into some of the other strategies. Absolutely, Bill. And there are. You've got short-term capital gain and you've got long-term capital gain. Long-term assets held over one year, those have a beneficial tax rate attached to them. And guess what? It could be as low as zero. Long-term capital gain rates can have a 0% tax attached to it, depending on what bracket you're in. So who we wouldn't develop, want that, right? Who wouldn't yeah, want that? Who absolutely who who wouldn't want to pay zero percent tax on, on on income? So absolutely, Bill. Um, that is dependent on your tax rate. You need a plan in order to make sure you're controlling what marginal tax rate you're in. You know, we talk a lot about a plan uh, today on the show, and really every week on this show. When you think of a comprehensive financial plan, tax planning is such a huge component in every aspect, whether it's investment, income, 
um, and, and we're speaking to investment, there's some other opportunities I know yep. that, that potentially could be done, but unfortunately, if Rogers sold the property already, um, it may be too late on one, but not too late on another. What say you? You got it, Phil. So too late on something called a 1031 exchange. Uh, basically, it's a like kind exchange. There are rules where you have to designate the property within a certain time frame. So that's something that you need to be proactive with. The other is the opportunity zone, which gives you a little bit wider range of opportunity to defer some capital gains on any type of transaction, including Rogers with the rental property.